speakers, I would request everyone to mute themselves so that we don't have echo during the meeting. And please use the chat box to ask any questions during the presentation, and um, we would be answering all of them at the end of the presentation. Um, so we have the symbols for mute and chat shown over here if you have any questions. And we'll go ahead and start the meeting. So I welcome everyone uh, this evening and thank you for taking time to join the meeting. So we are here today to go over the public meeting for WJ Bose at Baum and Roberts Mini Roundabout. And I'm Shweta Rao, I'm with CTO Fort Worth TPW and I'm the project manager on this project. The design engineer for this project is Denaway Associates and uh, we'll be going over the scope and the details about this project today. So this is our brief agenda for the uh, presentation today. We will be going over the project location and provide some background on what the existing site conditions are and why the project was selected um, for uh, intersection improvements and what are the proposed improvements at this location and why was a roundabout selected for this location and what our construction schedule looks like and what are the generally frequently questions on such kind of projects. So we have put together a few questions that we generally receive on similar kind of projects. So we will be going over those at the end of the presentation. So coming to the project location, um, WJ Bose at Baum and Roberts intersection, it's located in between four major arterials. We have Boat Club Road on the west, West Bailey Boswell on the north, Marine Creek Parkway on the east, and Cromwell Marine Creek Road on the south. So both WJ Bows, it connects the east-west arterials, and Bowman Roberts, it connects the north-south arterials. So coming to the project background, the intersection is currently uh, operating at a two-way stop controlled as a two-way stop controlled intersection. And it has kind of a skewed geometry. I'll switch between the slide and the next one. So this is the aerial image that shows the existing geometry of the intersection. Uh, as we can see that it's not a perpendicular or a perpendicular intersection. It has a skewed geometry and uh, that's the reason it creates some un unsafe conditions for the drivers and it doesn't provide enough side distance for people coming southbound on Berman Roberts, as well as people trying to turn um, east on the Berman Roberts going north. So uh, one of the reasons to select this project was uh, the unsafe geometry, as well as the unsafe speeding. We had multiple crashes at this project site. Um, when we pulled out the accident data, we had 11 crashes all during daytime um, between 200, 2017 to 2019 on this project. So other than that, we are experiencing high congestion during peak hours and um, there's a lot of delay caused due to the two-way stop sign inter and uh, that's one of the reasons to select this project for intersection improvements. So our major goal uh, with this project was to improve safety and operation. Uh, at this intersection and we have selected a mini roundabout to meet this project goals. Um, we will also be improving roadway paving and drainage as a part of this project. The project is funded using 2014 bonds and the construction estimate for this project is around 500,000. So as you can see in this picture, the intersection has a skewed geometry and that creates unsafe conditions. It doesn't provide enough side, uh, side distance for the drivers to navigate properly to, uh, through the intersection. And um, it results in multiple crashes and accidents and uh, creates unsafe conditions at this intersection. So this is the proposed improvement uh, that uh, our design engineer and we as a city are proposing at this location. It's a mini roundabout 
it's similar to our conventional roundabout, but uh, property that a mini roundabout, um, I mean, property that distinguishes it from a conventional roundabout is the fully traversable central island. So large vehicles like trucks, buses, and trailers could traverse over this uh, central island and use it as a kind of a path to navigate through the intersection. So uh, coming to the roundabout selection on why exactly we have selected a mini roundabout for this intersection. The first thing is uh, obviously our main concern at this intersection was safety. So to increase safety at this intersection, we have selected a roundabout as roundabout proved to be the safest at great intersection type. And um, with the traffic tra traversing through the roundabout in a unidirectional way, uh, we have, I mean, um, it reduces the number of crashes at the intersection. And it also eliminates the T-bone crashes that, that are the most kind of high risk accidents. So even if we have any accident at the intersection, it would be minor vendors and it won't be any major accident. Uh, roundabout also eliminates the awkward geometry of the intersection and it will also reduce the delay caused due to stop control. And it's also safe when compared to signal intersections where we are using the yield or permitted left turn lanes, uh, left turn movements. So, um, like I said, it reduces the amount of T1 crashes at the intersection. And it operates more efficiently under high volumes versus the traditional stop or signal traffic signal controlled intersection. So we also did a traffic signal warrant analysis for this intersection. Um, so we compared both roundabout as well as traffic signal to see which one would operate better for this location. And considering the traffic, opera uh, the traffic operations, both of them tend to like show equally positive results, but considering the safety, um, we felt that the roundabout was a safer alternative when compared to a traffic signal, because um, one of the things was the left turn lanes. And with the current geometry where we have only single lane going in each direction, providing a yield or permitted left turn would increase, I will cause delays, more delays, uh, for those turning moments, and it would also uh, make the intersection more unsafe with um, cause of more T1 accidents. So that was one of the concerns with the signal intersection and to in, uh, improve operations with the traffic signal alternative, we would have to include additional left turn lanes for the left turn movements, and that would have increased the project cost than what it actually is. Coming to the project schedule, the easement acquisition at this location is complete and we are currently waiting on utility relocation from at and and Charter to start the construction. So we will be executing a construction task order with our contractor in February of 2021. And we would start construction as soon as we have the utilities out of our way. So we are currently anticipating early spring for the start of construction and the duration would be around six months. So Noel chances from, our fame, from the FAIN group would be the point of contact for our contractor and myself uh, from City of Fort Worth would be the contact for um, we will be the project manager contact for the project. So coming to the last part of the presentation, the frequently asked questions. So the first question that we generally receive at almost every meeting is, will, the, will there be road closures during construction? And if so, what would be the detour? Or how would be the do? Uh, so what will the detour look like? So we haven't finalized the traffic control for this 
construction yet, but we would be providing contactless access through the intersection. Um, can someone please mute the microphone? Sorry. So we would have continuous access through the intersection and um, one way or the other, and we would update everyone before we are ready to start construction on the detour if we have any. The second one was why was the roundabout selected? So like I said, it was the safest alternative for a skewed intersection and that is what we found to be the safest option to reduce the number of crashes and to eliminate the side distance issue and also um, to increase the operations at this intersection. Uh, we also have more details on the roundabout uh, benefits of off roundabouts on fortvertexas.gov slash roundabouts. So uh, another question for that we generally receive on intersection projects is about the sidewalk connectivity. So we are not including any sidewalk as a part of this project right now because there's no connectivity both on WJ Bose as well as Bowman Roberts. So um, even if we install sidewalks, it would be kind of in between nowhere and it wouldn't provide connectivity to any of the next roads. But WJ Bose Road is a potential candidate for 2022 bond program. So if that gets selected, we would have sidewalks as a part of that project. And the last one is, will the project impact access to the adjacent properties? So currently we have three properties at this intersection. The only property that has access right now is the one on the southwest corner. And we will be providing them continuous access. We won't be closing off the access to that property at any point of the at any point of time. So I think that is all. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, and we would be happy to help. Looks like we have a question here. Will this impact the repayment of Bowman Roberts schedule for February? Um, actually, I'm not sure about the repayment project right now. Uh, I'll check that and I'll get back with you if I have any um, update on that. So our next question is, how does the mini roundabout account for WJ Bose, which is classified as a neighborhood collector for the city master thoroughfare plan in the future where WJ Bose is improved? I believe neighborhood collectors are two lanes in each direction. Um, let me answer that question. Uh, okay. Uh, so this mini roundabout is an interim improvement um, that that is you know is intended to be there for like possibly the next three to five years. Um, WJ Bowes, um, there's no there's no plans to to in, to widen WJ Bowes, but there is plans to um, now Bowman Roberts. There's no plans to uh, widen Bowman Roberts at this time, but WJ Bowes. It is in the bond uh, program to actually be four lanes. So um, if the if the project is selected and funded with the 2022 bond program, I believe that the budget for that project is in the 30 around 30 million dollars. So it won't be um, it, it will probably um, rebuild this intersection, and uh, at that point. Um, it, it might be the uh, traditional intersection um, because the skew will be eliminated. 
because the roadway will be realigned. So um, the mini roundabout, it is an inner room improvement for safety um, that is desperately needed. And it's, it's, it's a three to five year improvement. Um, there's a strong uh, chance that WJ Bowes will be in the 2022 bond program. And that is completely going to rebuild and realign WJ Bowes. Thank you, Lisette. So Frank said that the southbound lane is scheduled to be repaved. Frank, I'll check with our team. I'm not sure about this project, and I'll get back with you. Uh, if you could leave uh, contact information over there on chat, I'll get back with you after the meeting on that. Um, so just as um, additional information, we are recording this meeting and we will be sending it out to all the neighborhood associations and uh, we will be posting it on the project website. If you want to share it with someone or um, just circulate it around. Thank you, Frank, for providing the contact information. Do we have any further questions? Uh, Shara, there's a couple of there, there's a, a few more questions on the chat box. Um, are the lanes on a mini roundabout wide enough for school buses? The mini roundabout is fully traversable, so the school buses can go right across. Uh, the very the 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 little doom. So yes, um, the buses will be able to just go right across. The, the center island um, project schedule is early spring for duration of six months. That's correct. Um, we're hoping to, um, because we're going to build this with asphalt and um, a little bit of concrete, you know, we can, we can do work a little bit faster. So, yes, we're hoping to accomplish that in six months. Um, and then he says, we did not receive notice of the meeting until today. Uh, I believe we mailed um, Jeff. Can you could you talk about uh, our mailing and and our notifications, et cetera? Uh, sure, absolutely, uh, Ryan. I would like to hear how you got what notification you got um, today. I'm curious um, how what that was, but we did send out a couple of weeks ago printed mailers with invitations. It's been uh, it was sent out through next door and out on our social media. Um, hey. We have a lot of various options, but I really want to know from Ryan. Hey, Jeff. But, yeah, yeah Je Jeff, this is Ryan Smith. I'm president of the Northwest Alliance, and this wasn't sent to any of the neighborhood leaders or the Alliance until today. Um, okay. So that's generally sent uh, uh, many days in advance. Uh, so it was sent out, you know, this morning, as Frank said, uh, I think you would have had a lot more, um, a lot more participation and probably comments on this if it was sent out in proper notice, uh, to the, to the leaders in the neighborhood. Um, cause we didn't have time to get it to, you know, to every, uh, all our, uh, homeowners. Um, so sure. there are concerns here. Um, Number one, you guys are, are counting on this being included in the in the bond package in 2022 and the chances of that happening are are slim. And TPW even gave us a uh, uh, a presentation at the Alliance and, you know, that's the chances of that happening are, are not good. So I guess I would like to see if that doesn't happen, are we really planning for you know, longer than three to five years. Is this the right plan? Um, <clears throat> can somebody answer that? Uh, sure, Ryan. We can um, believe that we um, did a traffic study and we have a horizon year for the traffic study. Um, and I believe that that is, you know, I think that it's a five-year, the horizon date is a five-year. We can probably 
uh, do you know a little bit projection and, and take a look at a 10 year um, to determine that. Uh, I am in the committee that is working on the 2022 bond program and, and um, the roadway is still on the top nine identified projects. Um, and, and actually we're, we're, uh, we're planning on doing like a, a project submittal for the Tarrant County bond um, and include that the WJ Bulls project as part of that. So um, I, I will, I will, uh, you know, confirm um, the information that was presented to you guys previously. But I just had a meeting about 2022 bond program this afternoon, uh, where we were still discussing WJ Bulls as, as a, a strong candidate. So um, because we're we're going to apply for funding from the for the for the bond, for the uh, Tarrant County bond. Uh, okay. So, uh, but but we can certainly look at you know we can extend our horizon for the traffic study and look at what a ten year will look like. Um, hey, Lisette, then, going, yeah. Lisette, I got some other comments of that. Uh, Bowman mm -hmm. Roberts is not even on the, the thoroughfare uh, plan for Fort Worth. Are you aware of that? Yes, I was talking about W J Bowes. Sorry about that. Okay, but you're talking about that intersection of W J Bowes and Bowman Roberts and um it's bowman roberts itself is not even on the thoroughfare plan we brought that up many times to the city of fort worth countless and, times uh and, and it also um our concerns here you're developing a you know a, a, maybe a, a plan for three to five years yeah uh, we've been promised in this area and why we have concerns is you may be saying right now that this is included in the bond package, but then last minute other projects were pulled prior and sent elsewhere. So that's pro partially why our roads in this area are in such horrible shape uh, as bond money was pulled in this area. So uh, I think we would, like I said uh, originally, uh, I think you would have more participants if this was uh, brought to the leaders. And uh, um, this isn't aligning with everything that was told to the Alliance a few weeks ago. Uh, okay, well, I believe, Jeff, that we reach out to the neighborhood, our neighborhood coordinator, so we can uh, send information to the next door to all the neighborhood associations in this area, including Marine Creek Ranch and Marine Creek Hills, et cetera. So we can, we can certainly you know, uh, do another uh, another uh, call out and 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 um, and distribute the information. I, I just saw from my consultant that we did a ten year horizon traffic study, so we can provide the results of that. The, the truth of the matter is that we're using 2014 bond residuals to do this project because it was it was uh, it was such a high uh, safety you know concern, uh, and and this is in support also of our vision zero strategy. Of, of eliminating, you know, high impact crashes and, and high injury and fatalities. So even if it's, it was a, an improvement to be there for five years or 10 years, it's still, um, it's taking that safety con concern that we definitely need to improve this intersection. So um, it's, it's, it's definitely something that needs to be done. Now, in terms of, you know, Obama and Roberts not being in the master to fair plan, that is something to be discussed with, you know, our development department and, and determining you know, uh, you know, we jump in here real quick. David Mendes from Marine Creek Ranch. Um, we've been bringing up Bowen Roberts on the master being left off the master thoroughfare plan for around eight years, and we keep hearing the same thing. We'll look at it, we'll check it out, we'll look at it. Then I bring up crash studies. I said, Hey, are you aware that there are four crashes in that bend on Bowman Roberts repeatedly that happened? And yes, that's what I, I got was unless the police are called, they don't report it. They don't go in their statistics. Well, the police were called. Ambulance was called. We've had people jump over that rail. That rail needs constant repair because it keeps getting hit. And it does not meet TxDOT safety standards when it exceeds an angle. I believe it's what? Greater than 10 degrees off center. If I'm, 100, if I'm correct on that, and I'm maybe misquoting. So you have a huge problem that you keep ignoring. Now we're looking at a three to five year plan for a place that has not had any attention to it in the last 10 years. 
I think that's very short sighted. Plus, we're depending on bond money that's not even guaranteed, which we keep getting not guaranteed. So I'm sorry if we're not very enthusiastic about a plan that does a lot of maybes and probabilities, and we'll look into that. Well, I understand. But however, this is just an intersection improvement project. This is the program that we're managing. Uh, you have valid concerns about, you know, Bob and Roberts. And, and all I can say is that, you know, we can uh, follow up with the folks that handle, you know, the master through prayer plan classification and and uh, the planning for Bob and Roberts. Um, all I can tell you is that this is part of the intersection improvement program, which is a separate program. Okay, that so what's the crosswalk situation like here? Yes, yes. So what's the crosswalk uh, situation. Uh, for, for pedestrian traffic. Yeah, for pedestrian traffic, there's a plan that that uh, that's also not included with this. There's a plan that the city officials are working on for the Eagle Mountain Saginaw School District to uh, provide you know pedestrian routes you know throughout the the roadway network, and, and that's separate from this project. This project what, what's that? There, there's no there's no current plan. Well, I all I'm saying is that I am aware that. There's, there was a meeting with the Eagle Mountain Saginaw School District, and uh, I even have heard our assistant city manager, Ms. Uh, Dana Burdoff, you know, speak about this, where I, I believe that several departments are looking at um, how to improve the entire roadway network in this area. So that's what I'm saying that, you know, WJ Bose is a strong candidate for the bond. Uh, of course, all the projects right now for the bond, you know, they're not guaranteed, but that all I can say is related information that I have. The master through for plan, you know, is updated. It goes through a rigorous process to be updated, and there's a lot of things that take into account for that. That's not in my in, in my purview of, of, of inference or expertise. All I can do is forward that, the concerns to uh, the folks that are responsible for that. I also am aware that the the request came to uh, for that bend to the south, to the south of Cormoran Creek on Bowman Robert. So I believe that they're they're evaluating that as part of the neighborhood improvement pl program, because Bowman Roberts is not an arterial or a bank collector is considered a neighborhood street. So uh, I understand the frustrations. All I can tell you is that there's a I whole lot. I don't think of, you do understand the frustrations because I, I do, Bowman but but isn't but, just a neighborhood can, street. Can I finish, please? Can I finish? Order. Yes, I understand. I live in this neighborhood, so I understand completely. I drive through this road almost daily, so I do understand. All right? I live on Marine Creek Ranch, and my granddaughter goes to uh, Greenfield Elementary, and I drive through these roadways every single day. So believe me, I do understand. What I'm trying to communicate is that, unfortunately, tonight, we're here just to talk about this intersection improvement project. And, and and we can communicate the concerns about all these other issues to the to all the other departments and all the other programs that that handle those particular issues. Okay, uh, I cannot alter the master transfer plan. I cannot, uh, you know, all I can do is just to focus on the various different programs. And this is part of the intersection improvement program. Okay, okay that's so let's talk about, about this project directly. Okay, you have. No acts, no crosswalks in this intersection. Exactly, because in order to install crosswalk at this intersection, we will have to have connectivity for sidewalks and installing those handicap ramps without being able to connect sidewalks to anything is not safe. Okay, so, so that's, so that's what this the overlay project, plan for sidewalks in the future. The, the overlay plan for sidewalks in the future is being looked at by another department. That's what I'm, not by our department, but another division. <laughs> Basically, so, so so we have another department, transportation management, who is responsible for our sidewalk, you know, city program and for the Vision Zero program, and they are looking at this entire area uh, based on the, the discussions and the meetings with the Eagle Mountain Saginaw School District and the and the neighborhood leaders for this particular area. So that's what I'm saying. They're developing a, a plan of how can we, uh, you know, incorporate elements of the of the sidewalk pieces and but we networks into the bond. So we're, we're looking at the 2022 bond and there's a lot of different programs 
that are part of the bond. So there's an arterial program and they're looking at the main thoroughfares only. There's a neighborhood street program and they're only looking at neighborhood streets. There's an intersection improvement program and they're looking at that. There's a sidewalk program and they're looking at that. So there's all these different programs that that every one of us is developing and, and we still are having to go through the public input phase to, to solidify, you know, the 22 net bond programs as well. So, um, so for this particular project, it didn't make any sense for us to be able to just install ADA ramps to that don't connect to anything because so, the roadways don't have curb and gutter. No, let me finish explaining. The roadways don't have curb and gutter. They have open ditches. They have to be reconstructed in order for you to be able to install sidewalks that that actually take you to another street to connect to something. So, you know, the main focus of this project is to provide safety improvements to eliminate crashes and improve site distance. So that's what this project it's 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 created and that's what the objective of this particular project are for. So you so said how 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 are the students supposed to cross this intersection from Boswell High School? The students are uh, we did we did studies out here. Um, and um, maybe Donaway can uh, provide information about that. Um, the students right now, there's not a whole lot of pedestrians out there because there's no facilities there. So the way that they're getting across now is the way that they will get across when the mini roundabout is in place. Actually, the mini roundabout slows the speeds and allows better side distance. So if there's actually pedestrians trying to get across, they can get across. But if they're getting across there now, with the existing conditions, they will be able to get across with the meeting roundabout gets there. So you've seen all the wrecks at the roundabout at Marine Creek uh, Parkway and uh, Carmel Marine Creek, where there's definitely a still an issue with understanding how a roundabout works. Uh, this roundabout is going to be right next to the high school, where now you have new new drivers who are unexperienced with a roundabout either. Um, is there any? roundabout training that's going to be involved maybe some you know yes we are go we are going to uh we're going to schedule meetings with the high schools we're gonna uh uh you know try to uh, present to the school we're gonna talk to the bus drivers uh the well, chrome marine well, the, the chrome marine creek uh a marine creek parkway roundabout still has some accidents uh they're minor fender benders they're not severe crashes and um, and the traffic uh, it's been alleviated, you know, considerably compared to the pre-existing conditions of the roundabout. So uh, and this run, this intersection uh, is going to operate at much lower speeds than what the Marine Creek and Marine Creek Parkway roundabouts. Uh, those were designed where the entries were still around 30 miles an hour, and and now we're 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 designing uh, for much lower speeds underneath 25 miles an hour. So. Um, we, you know, we're we're gonna do everything that we can to to reach out to the schools and to um, and to the police department and uh, you know get their support and everything. I don't just mean education for roundabouts at the school level. We need it at the adult level. Um, people are unaware of how to use a roundabout. Some people are, and some people still yield in the middle of the roundabout. There needs to be some kind of education on this is how you use a roundabout. We we did a public you know outreach you know a few years back. Uh, we developed you know educational videos. We developed brochures. We distributed to uh, to every public meeting that we attended to, uh, and um, we did a study. We recently conducted a study, which I can provide a copy of. Uh, actually, we just completed a few minutes ago where we look at. Um, at least 10 of our roundabouts right here in Fort Worth, and we compare them to, um, you know, how do I know that, how are they operating in terms of, you know, crash predictions to, and compare them to about 28 traffic signals. And the study concluded that the roundabouts are operating at a, at a, at a, at the, at the better than the national level in terms of crashes. And of course, the crashes are a lot um, less severe and the number is still less than a traffic signal. So I understand that um, there might be still, you know, some people that are not, you know, uh, you know, sure about how to drive the roundabouts, but the study indicates that our drivers, the majority of our drivers are, uh, you know, getting how to drive the roundabouts and they're operating better than the national standard. 
So um, we, I, I can I provide a copy of that study. Correct. Lisette, Lisette, I have a question. Have most of your study, when have most of your studies been done? Is it the last year or is it prior? No, no, no. We completed the study last year and we looked at the previous three years, roundabouts that, that, that have been in the ground for at least three years here in Fort Worth. So the traffic studies in that area, were they done in the last year during COVID or prior? Oh, we collected the traffic study prior to COVID. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lisette, we understand that you, you know, you're just doing your job here. There's just frustration in this area. Um, we've been promised things for years here. Um, personally, I've lived here since 2005 and it's just always, oh, the next bond, the next bond, the next bond and it never happens. And that answer isn't good enough anymore. And yes, that you know, we got screwed out of the, uh, this current bond with Cormorwood Creek when it was removed. The same thing with WJ Boaz and Bailey Boswell. They were removed from the bond at the last minute in order to provide other services up at the Heritage Trace area. So we're, we're glad you're making a three to five year plan. Yes. We're glad when you make you so we're I making understand. I, right, I, right. I'm glad you're making improvements I, here. I, but I understand. A, a three to five year plan isn't good enough anymore. Because this is going to be around a lot longer I, than I, that. I I understand. Uh, I understand the frustration. I, I like I said, I have lived here since 1995 in the Marine Creek Hills area. Now I'm in the Marine Creek Hills area. I have all the history. I have worked for the city for 26 years. So I know the history about, you know, the 2018 bond and the last minute changes. And I, I, I agree with you. I share your frustrations. All I can tell you is that we, we're, we're listening and we're trying to, we're trying to uh, make improvements, including the 2022 bond. I don't think that, um, that we, we have, uh, I don't think that leadership is, is going to ignore your, your, your com concerns or complaints. Uh, I have heard even the, uh, like I said, the assistant city manager, you know, make a definite commitment that, you know, this area, we have to uh, make improvements in this area and we have to, you know, we're committed to include improvements in this area in, in this upcoming bond. So um, this, this, bond this, project, this, this project, however, it is just, is, is part of the intersection improvement program for the city where we select intersections to make improvements and sometimes the improvements are in the room improvements until the permanent solution can get there. Okay, that is just, that's just what this program is about. Okay, um, but, I, but I, will, I will pass all of these concerns. We will summarize all the concerns from the meeting um, and then we will, we will forward those up to um, to leadership and the other divisions and the other departments. And, you know, if there's any additional information that we can provide, we're, we're here for you. We're here to, uh, to help you. Um, I mean, I was the one who wanted to have an, an additional meeting. We already had a meeting for this a few months back and we didn't get any response. And that's why I wanted to have another meeting. So and he was informed of it. Uh, yeah. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of funds, you know, mailing, sending mailers out to all of the property owners in this area and contacting the schools and everything. So I don't know why the information is not getting out there to you. I don't think us. anyone got your information. Lisette, Lisette, the city makes it every HOA, they, they make it a big deal where they register and with the alliance and so they can send out information that just that hasn't happened in a timely manner, you know, receiving this information at 9 a.m. Um, on the day of is not acceptable. And I, I no, agree, Brian. Yeah. Uh, and, and so. Sorry, I'm gonna get three pizza sliders. <laughs> so, hey, Ryan, this is Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I muted her. Ryan, this is Jeff. I'm gonna look into why you didn't get um, notification a little sooner. I mean, you should have gotten that a couple of weeks ago. Jeff, Jeff you, might, we don't you might talk to Maddie about that. She's aware of it. So if you want yeah, to talk to Maddie talk Gibbs. To her tomorrow. If, yeah. they were, if there were mailers that went out to residents, no one got the mailers. I mean, they, it's not just me. I talked to, you know, a couple dozen people a day and, you know, 
more than a hundred a day on a food truck day. And Dave, we're not within that milling uh, on this project. It's yeah, it's we wouldn't get the milling, but we would get the email. So we get the email, but no email either. Right. That's right. Yeah. So I think there's I mean, the mailing. The mailing was delivered on January 9th. But yeah, if you guys are a little outside of the range on that mailing, you would it would have been electronic. But but still, you shouldn't have got it well before nope. this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. And I mean, please take back to uh, you know the higher ups, the city manager, everybody else that. Um, the banking on the 2022 bond is only if the bond passes. And if the bond doesn't have support, it doesn't pass. And the support numbers for a bond are extremely low. And in Marine Creek Ranch, we have more than enough votes to vote down a bond. And that's just the facts of it all, is that this whole Northwest area has repeatedly been forgotten about by the city for the last 20 years. Um, it is getting to the point to where it's almost like it's on purpose. Um, everything goes to Heritage Trace. Everything goes to inside the loop. And we get forgotten about. And it's just that whole point of really getting frustrated with no sidewalks, no expanded roads. Kids walking on these roads with no sidewalks. I mean, you want to have a fun time? Drive down Bailey Boswell when school lets out and you have teenagers walking on two inches or, or you know a 12 inches of asphalt on the side of the road um and that's what you know we constantly keep hearing is what's going to be done what's going to be done we get promises nothing's done and so it comes down to the point of we got to start yelling louder so i'm sorry if we're taking frustrations out on you i know it's you know you guys are you know the boots on the ground as well uh but it's that point now where it's 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 having time to actually yell. I understand, and I, you can you can do that all day. We, I get it. I I've done this for a long time, and I don't take it personal. I I share the frustrations. I understand. Um, all I, all I can tell you is that we're listening, um, and we're trying to. Um, there's a lot of things that have changed in this last two years. Uh, a lot of programs and a lot of initiatives and a lot of things that are changing. Uh, for the future, um, for the you know to make sure that we take these things into account. In terms of the 2022 bond, if it'll pass or not pass, uh, right now we're collaborating with the Tarrant County. The Tarrant County is going to go to do a bond for 400 million now in November of this year, and the county um, it's it's approaching all the cities, and the city of Fort Worth is one of the largest cities in the Tarrant County, and we are expected to submit uh, to apply for a 50 percent match. That means 50% comes from the county and 50% from the city. That's a big investment. And the city is hoping to submit, you know, for up to 150 to $160 million worth of infrastructure. And, um, and, and so the, the main thoroughfares and, the, and the, 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 so, you know, railroad separation crossings and neighborhood streets, et cetera, we're, we're going to apply for this uh, funding by, uh, I think it's April 4th is the deadline. And, and I don't think that that we would like to leave that kind of investment on the table. I mean, if we can partner with the county and, and go and secure $150 million worth for us, you know, use $150 million worth of our money, that's $200 million worth of infrastructure. And I don't think that the, the voters would like to leave that kind of money on the table. So, um, you know, so that's a big thing that the bond is, is, is having this, you know, this, this election in November and that you know, we already have meetings with them and we're going to submit for funds for a lot of these roads. Uh, WJ Bulls is one of them. So um, I understand that you're right. You know, the bond is not guaranteed and the bond might not pass. But where we have a partner that is it's, it's bringing quite a bit of money to the table, you know, if we do get awarded those funds from the county, I, I, I don't see people not wanting to take advantage of that. So if those um, funds aren't going to be used in the area they live. I mean, it's very easy to see that. Perhaps, um, but you know that that's still a lot of infrastructure that um, you know the city can you know uh, capitalize on. That is going to bring more revenue. That is going to bring development. That is going to, you know, with this COVID situation, is going to generate jobs, et cetera. So 
there's a lot of things that you know we 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 need to think about you know when we're i know that it's it's really easy to get frustrated because of our own you know frustrations but you know this will be a great thing to be able to um to to partner with the county and and go ahead and, and push this bond you know program forward so i hope that we can do that Thank you, Lisette. Uh, we have a few more questions here. Uh, one is from Dwayne. Can the presentation be emailed to us? Uh, sure, Dwayne, I have your contact information, so I'll email you the presentation after the meeting. To whom at the school district? I thought I was okay. So, Dwayne, we sent out the email to Mr. Chadwell. I cannot remember his first name, but um, we sent out the information to him. So 10 here horizon. Um, so our engineer has worked on a 10 year horizon period uh, for the traffic counts on this project. So this project is good to go for the next uh, 10 years. As an interim in improvement again. Next one. I think that is all the questions that I have on the chat box. Do we have any questions from the call-in users? I apologize again for reaching out to you all in last minute. Um, I thought that you might have all received the information as a part of our early communication with the mailers and reaching out to the neighborhood association. Um, I reached out to Maitlin yesterday to provide a kind of reminder for everyone to join the meeting today. Um, but I was not sure that you didn't receive the information earlier. So we'll make sure that we'll reach out to you all well in prior to um, the meeting from the next time. Yes, and Ryan, Ryan, if you can just give me your contact information, I'll be glad to follow up in terms of um, I'll find out, you know, what's going on with the request for the sidewalks, you know, on, uh, along the Bailey Baswell and Palmer Roberts corridor. I believe they were doing also uh, evaluation of that band, what the what that guardrail is, and, and see if I can get a status from the uh, from that department, that that division as well, and. We can provide a copy of the traffic study. We can provide a copy of the presentation. Uh, we can do another meeting if we feel like we need to, you know, have another meeting to try to reach more people. We can do that also, um, you know, and and then I, I'll be glad to provide you guys with any information, you know, regarding the progress on, on the 2022 um, bond program as well. Lisette, I appreciate that. I will uh, email you my contact information. Please. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Lisette. And there was something that I missed in the presentation that uh, we will be putting out the message boards kind of a, uh, like a week prior to start of construction so that it would uh, give a notification to everyone who drives through that intersection that uh, we would be starting construction in a week. Um, so our contractor would be doing that. and. Let us know if you need another, uh, I mean, we we could do a next door post to let everyone know that we would be starting construction whenever we have a defined schedule for the start of construction. Uh, let us know if you need information to be sent to you all in some other medium too. So, do we have any further questions? I guess not. Again, thank you all for joining the meeting this evening and um, 
thank you for taking the time in the last with the last minute update and um, we will try to be more uh, aggressive the next time in reaching out to all the neighborhoods before the meeting thank you all again for joining the meeting this evening thank you very much thank you